Hello Falcons, welcome to another DI on drawing the bar models. So uh, what exactly is uh, the bar model diagram? Now in atomic physics, the Bohr models are Rutherford Bohr models presented by Niels Bohr and Ernest Rutherford in 1913. It's a system consisting of a small dense nucleus. Remember what the nucleus is? So again, uh, think of the sun, think of the entire thing as the solar system. So the nucleus consists of the protons and the neutrons, right? So, um, and it is surrounded by orbiting electrons. And we've said that electrons before can be likened to the planets revolving around the sun, right? So, and that is the intent of this DI or direct instruction video. So, uh, how exactly do we do the drawing of the Bohr diagram for each element? So, but first things first, Bohr models. So, the Bohr models are used to predict reactivity in elements. Reactivity refers to how likely an element is to form a compound with another element. And when looking at Bohr models, we look at its valence electrons. Remember the VE? So this would be the electrons on the loss energy level or the outermost electrons, right? To determine reactivity. So what else do we have here? So when you draw the Bohr model of any element, draw the nucleus first and that is why i gave you the coin right so write the number of neutrons n and the number of protons p in the nucleus then you draw the first energy level and we said that energy level can also be called the orbit or the orbital or the ring or the shell so draw the electrons or the e in the energy levels according to the rules uh, that we uh, mentioned earlier, the octet rule, and we'll get into that shortly. And make sure you draw the electrons in pairs as much as possible, and keep track of how many electrons are put in each level and the number of electrons left to use. And when we think about um, the electrons now, right? They can only be placed on the orbit or on the energy level or on the ring or on the shell with set number of electrons. So there's a maximum number. Like for instance, the first shell or the level one closest to the nucleus can only hold a maximum of two electrons. Levels two and three can hold a maximum of eight. Levels of four and five can hold a maximum of 18 electrons, and level six and seven can hold a maximum of 32 electrons. Now it says here you must fill one level before going on to draw the next level. Okay, and uh, let's try and do that on a loose leaf now because that's the expectation for you to do the first 20 elements in the periodic table. So, how did you do that last time in class? So this is essentially a review, a request actually by some of you guys, like uh, how about a recorded video on this Miss app? So I'm just doing this now for you so that you could pause it and hopefully you kind of get it, right? So here, so this was uh, what was uh, projected on the screen, right? By the document camera in class. So um, I want you to just, um, of course, as always, write your name, homeroom, and the date, and then bar model. That's uh, the activity or the assignment. But of course, I want you to just tell me in your own words what is the bar model, right? And of course, um, we mentioned that earlier, right? So I hope well, you can just pause the video and go back to it, right? But in any case, um, this is what you have started on. So I want you now to draw the bar model for the first 20 elements. Notice that we have here the square, 
right? And on this one, remember, well, this is now the isotope notation. So you have in the center the symbol of the element. So this is now the first element, H for hydrogen. And the number on top, on the left side, would be what? Yes, it's the mass number. And in the periodic table, this is easy to detect, right? Because uh, that number with decimal places, that would be the mass or how heavy is your element, right? And we round it off to the nearest whole number. Now, the number here below would be the atomic number. And what did we say about the atomic number? It's also equal to the number of protons. It's also equal to the number of electrons. So going back to the steps, right? First, you need to draw the nucleus. So this is now using the coin so that it is at least uh, the perfect uh, uh, part of your uh, bar model, right? Because the rest, the rest of the uh, shells, you can easily just really draw it, right? So here, so in the center, you have protons and neutrons, but there is a number before it. So with hydrogen, right? So what's the number of protons? It's also equal to the atomic number. So you have there 1p. How about the n or the neutron? So again, remember, that would be mass number, the one on top minus this. Mass number minus the atomic number. That's why you, you have here 0n. So you now have the nucleus done. Now, how do we place or distribute now the electrons? Because this is what the uh, Bohr model diagram is all about, right? We need to place the electrons or distribute the electrons. So first, draw the shell, the ring, the orbit, the orbital, or the energy level. It can, they're all synonymous, right? So here, electrons. So how many electrons can I place here on the first level? It's one. Why one? Because the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, also equal to the number of electrons. So I only have here one electron. So the idea of valence electrons was also mentioned, right? It says here electrons in the outermost shell, orbit, orbital, energy level, right? And uh, how many do you see here? Only one. So one there. VE or valence electron now is equal to one. And remember the octet rule uh, earlier, right? So uh, the first energy level can only accommodate two electrons. And then the next would be 8A, 8, 18, 18, 32, 32. So remember those, okay? For shell, 2, 2 and 3 would be 8, then 4 and 5 would be 18, 6 and 7 would be 32, okay? Now, let's try and have the second, right? And on the periodic table, what is um, the name of the element? Again, you have your own copy of uh, the periodic table, but... There's also the um, QR code there where you can see this, right? So this was our first, right? And the second element that would be helium. Now take note of helium here, right? So let me just uh, call on the uh, focus thing here, right? So if I click on helium, so notice the one with the decimal place is the mass. So there you go. So when you come to the drawing now of the uh, Bohr model for helium, you now have four as the mass. It's number two on the periodic table is the atomic number, right? So that if you start to draw using the coin, 
the nucleus, you have 2p. Why 2p? Because I have here 2. Atomic number equal to protons equal to electrons. So there you go, 2p. 2n, why 2? Because you have it as 4 minus 2. That's why you have a 2n. So how do I distribute my electrons here? So draw the first circle, right? And the first shell or orbital or shell or ring can only accept a maximum of two. So you can place it here, right? Two electrons. And how many are the valence electrons? Well, electrons in the outermost shell, well, there's only one, one ring here or one shell, so I can only see two, right? So the answer there is two. And then you continue with element number three, which is lithium, beryllium, up to calcium, right? Now, as a freebie to this discussion, let's have one example. Let's say atomic number 21 with the symbol SC, right? So it would have what? The mass here is 44.95 rounded off to the nearest whole number. And that would be, yes, that would be 45. Then going back to this. So SC now, right? So SC, what is SC again? It's scandium, right? So it's scandium and we rounded off the mass, right? And it is, or it has atomic number 21, right? So draw the nucleus first, right? P and the N. How many P? It would be 21 because atomic number is also equal to the number of protons, equal to the number of electrons. How about the N? How many? Neutrons. So that would be 45 minus 21. So that would be, what do you see here? 24, right? So there you go. And let's start to draw now the rings or the shells or the orbitals or the energy level. Let's just stick with the word energy level. So the first energy level again, what did we say? Can only accommodate two. So we're trying to place really here. Think of it as, the, uh, as a solar system, right? The center is the nucleus. And you have all the planets, right? So um, the first energy level, how many can it accept? Two, right? So I have here one, two, right? Now, but I have to distribute how many? How do I? How many do I need to place? Twenty-one. So I just have two so far, right? So go on to the next shell or energy level. So with the second energy level, how many can it accommodate? It says there are eight, right? So there you go, eight. So second ring, I hope you can count that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I kind of just make sure that they are not lump all together, right? Although uh, some books would say they should come in pairs, but uh, for purposes of symmetry, like uh, it looks better if you do it this way, right? So you space it out evenly. So you have now eight on the second energy level. So two plus eight, how much is that? 10, but I have 21. So continue to draw the next energy level. So I am now on the third energy level. How many can it accept? It's eight. Remember one, uh, remember two, eight, eight, 
18, 18, and then you have 32, 32, okay? So here, so another eight, right? So I now have two as eight is 10 plus eight is 18, but I need to place 21. How many more to go? Three, right? That's why I have here one, two, three to complete the placement of the 21 electrons. But then how about the valence electrons? So valence electrons again are what? The electrons in the outermost shell, okay? Or on the last shell, how many do you see here? One, two, three. There you go, you have eight. So that's it though, Falcons, your turn. Ciao for now.